Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, March the 12th, 2018. You're listening to the Queen Quaymo podcast. Today, I got a very, very um, important topic that I want to talk about today, and it's regarding child molestation. I have a special guest that's going to be interviewing, sharing her personal story and experiences with us today. And I definitely feel like this is a topic that we need to definitely talk about in our communities because it's so um, it's such a huge thing. You know, we have a lot of people in our community uh, from all different ages who experience being molested or even raped as a child. And, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of talk about that right now in the media world regarding the Me Too movement and, you know, these women that were celebrities and sleeping around with celebrities and, you know, they all have their story that they want to tell. And I feel like um, it's important for our community, the black community, to talk about the experiences that we have firsthand because we never open our mouths about child molestation or being molested or a woman, um, you know, going through sexual assault. So I feel like it's really, really important for us to talk more so about uh, children going through child molestation because oftentimes uh, we don't know that this is happening to the child. A lot of kids have kept secrets with them until they're grown, which ultimately uh, affects their behaviors and their life as they uh, progress in the world. So I feel like this conversation is definitely one that needs to happen. Um we want to talk about the signs and symptoms of a child being molested or being touched in an inappropriate way. I don't. And I also um, think that we need to make sure that we have in these conversations with the children. You know, I don't have kids, but I got a thousand damn nieces and nephews and kids that are special to me in my life. And so I want to make sure that we are talking about this with the kids and have the thorough definition of what each thing was and just properly educating ourselves about this issue because it definitely is one that's huge in our community. We need to make sure that we're telling people that this is something that's going on and we do need to uh, try to approach it because oftentimes when it is happening, even after we tell uh, individuals that it has happened, we have a couple of things that end up happening. Uh, Number one, people don't believe you number two we never go to the proper authorities and then number three even if we do go to the proper authorities sometimes the system isn't designed in our favor and they separate and um take these children out of the household when it possibly didn't even happen in the household so it's just a it's definitely an issue that i feel like we definitely need to address and we need to be proactive into identifying uh when something is happening to these children. So before further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play a little music that I kind of just get our minds ready and prepared for this conversation that we're going to have today. So I know this is a little bit on the more serious note. (laughs) Y'all know usually I'm on a goofy note and I always give information. But like I said, this podcast is generated towards our communities the inner communities, the minority communities, giving us information that we need to climb out of poverty and to help us evolve as a people. So that means sometimes we're going to have conversations and topics that are not easy to talk about, but it's necessary to talk about. So thank y'all for tuning in, listening to the Queen Quaymo podcast. And y'all just sit tight because we ain't going nowhere today. Y'all, y'all make sure y'all listening to this one. I woke up to see another day, yeah Daughter smelling family okay, yeah We done been through them rainy days, yeah But we okay, we alright I woke up to see another day To the most high, always get praise It feels good when you feel the growth 
even better when you see the rays Sun shining, I'm grinding until the sun gone Phone blowing, my girl want me to come home Money on the line, gotta get it cause the rent due Baby need new shoes, my mom need a new view We here for a reason, we live, we still breathing Take a chance, jump in the deep end, can't drown or fail Succeeding, they still sleeping, ZZ and reality TV And we W.I. Swear I can't stop winning Smile on my baby faces Like she can't stop grinning Go hard for the fam Until the world stops spinning Grind till I get it all Even then I will not finish Fat I woke up to see another day Yeah Daughter smelling family okay Yeah We done been through the rainy days Yeah But we okay We alright So we gon' party all night Yeah we just living our life Woke up to see another day, yeah Woke up to see another day This that feel good This that grab a drink and toast to the fact that you live and Let's do this one for the children Let them know that you hear them We done been through them struggles and made it out of them struggles Y'all yeah, bless us with hustle Mix that mind with the muscle Rainy days keep moving and jump over them puddles Good vibes, no trouble Keep that out of your bubble Make a dollar, then double Elevate, stay humble Don't trip, don't stumble Wake up, put a smile on your face You made it Celebrate it, you blessed. Never settle for less. And for the stars, go and give it your best. You gon' succeed long as you come and correct. You get the love and respect. You slip up, learn from it, don't live with regret. Stay strong, never let them see you cry or sweat. Keep your faith strong, you'll never have to second guess. Just know you're blessed. Fat. I woke up to see another day, yeah. Daughter smelling family, okay, yeah. We done been through them rainy days, yeah. But we okay. So we gon' party all night Yeah, we just livin' our life Woke up to see another day Yeah, woke up to see another day Yeah, you guys, that was a jam that came from my homeboy, A.C. Johnson. And the song is called Another Day Futuring Jasani. I think that's the girl name. But shout out to A.C. Johnson, man. He put out some dope ass hits all the time. You can listen to some more music from him on Google Play Music, Spotify, um, YouTube, iTunes. Just Google or, you know, search A.C. Johnson. In the search bar, hit subscribe, check out my nigga. He goes hard in the paint. But yeah, back to a serious discussion that we were having. I want to talk to y'all about child abuse and child molestation. I feel like this is a very, very serious topic that we need to be talking about. Number one, um, if we don't address these issues and make sure um, that the kids are healthy, they end up growing up being unhealthy, unstable adults. And majority, a high percentage, I'll say, of the adults who abuse alcohol, who are very physically violent, and who have um, these criminal histories, and I'm not going to say all, but like a high dose, high percentage, is because of some issues that they've had as children that wasn't addressed as a child. And because something happened to them, that should have never happened to them in the first place. And child abuse, child molestation, it all goes under the same line where it's physical, sexual, psychological maltreatment or neglect of the child or children. Especially sometimes, and I hate to say this, but especially is usually done by a parent or some type of caregiver who's close to that child. So the purpose of this episode today is to draw your attention to your babies. Make sure you're having these conversations with your babies. Make sure you having these conversations in the community to make sure that you are keeping your eyes and ears open to any signs of abuse. Make sure that you keeping these babies safe, you know, because that's what it all boils down to. These babies got to feel like they safe at home. They got to feel like they could come to you. And if something does happen, I want for the children uh, to feel comfortable to come to the parents or come to someone they trust. So 
Yeah, this is a serious thing. You know, I feel like we got so much attention going on with the Me Too movement. Everybody talking about Me Too, Me Too for the for the grown women, for the you know, the grown women are always um uh, and, and it's not a shade towards them. Shout out to them women who really have uh been sexually assaulted and who have been feeling comfortable to come forward and who have been telling that story. You know, salute to y'all because it's not an easy thing to do to talk about something that's serious. But I also want to make sure that we not uh, forgetting about these babies that this may have happened to, you know, and possibly young men. Because so often we think that uh, sexual harassment, sexual child molestation and all of those type of things along that line, we think that it only happens to women. When all actuality, it happens a lot more to men as well. It's just men are not vocal about it. They don't feel like they can come to someone for your judgment and talk to them. So. Yeah, before getting heavily into that topic, I got an interview from a special friend of mine who I will just leave anonymous at this point. Um, she's going to share her experience and give you guys a little knowledge that she has on the subject. So y'all just sit tight and tune into that. And we're going to go ahead and get that started right now. As promised, I have a special guest, guest in the building. She's going to kind of talk about this topic with me today because it's definitely an important one that our community needs to address. Um, she's a good friend of mine, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself to you guys. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, honey? I'm good. How about you? Good. So if able, if you feel like it, go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Um, I really don't know too much to say. It's nothing exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot being exciting, a honey. Yeah, <laughs> that's excitement right there. Being a mom. Being a parent. Yep, I'm a mom of two boys, five and one, and I have another boy on the way. Oh, man, I'm jealous, girl. I want all boys. I don't want no yeah, girls. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. want, I'm not a girly girl, so I don't want any girls. <laughs> I'm not either, but I just want a girl just because I have two boys. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine that right there. So today, uh, we're kind of talking about a very, very um, important topic that I think needs to be addressed in our community. And it goes along the lines of uh, child molestation. And um, I wanted to ask you your input about child uh, molestation being that you have children. How would you um, go about uh, talking about this issue with your children? Um, you have to start it off slow until eventually you can just be straight open with it. Like at the moment, my older son, he's five, so he goes to school. So every time like I, um, he's in the shower or he's getting dressed, I always tell him, don't let nobody touch you. If they touch your private parts, you scream and you let somebody know. You tell them, no, don't touch me. I tell them that every single time he gets dressed and he repeats it to me. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm doing it for the moment. But when he gets older, of course, I'm going to have to find different ways to explain it to him and eventually come completely open about what I'm saying to him. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Uh, do, can you recall um, being talked to about this subject as a child? Has anyone ever uh, talked about child molestation with you as a kid? No. Yeah. No. So how do you think that uh, affected you not having any information um, about this topic? Um, well... Like, to be honest, like when I was, when I was younger, I was, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it was like I was just out there because my mom and daddy were together until I was 12. And after I turned 12, they split up. So it was just me, my brother and sister, and my mom. And my mom didn't talk to us about anything. She didn't talk to me about my menstrual. She didn't talk to me about people touching on people. She didn't talk to me about how to present yourself, how to take care of yourself. She didn't talk to me about anything. So if I had any questions, I went and talked to my daddy about it. But I never mentioned anything about people touching people because back when I was younger, people were going through it, but nobody spoke on it. Right, right. And today, a lot of people are very open with it. 
And it's very common and it's sad to say that there's so many pedophiles and molesters out here just walking around here doing it, thinking that everything's okay. But when I was younger, a lot of people were going through it, but nobody was saying anything. And it hurts because when I was younger, I didn't even know. I didn't find out until I was an adult, but I had aunties and an uncle that were raped and molested. Wow. Wow. So I really, I really wish that like I known of that, you know what I'm saying? Because I was... You know what I'm saying? Molested and raped when I was younger. So I wish that somebody would have talked to me about it and told me the signs. But I mean, me going through it, it just made me stronger as a mother and to see the signs and how to be paranoid and be precautious and make sure that I'm protecting my babies. Because a lot of women, they have kids and they just think like, oh, they can go over here. It's okay. Nothing's going to happen. Or, hey, I'm just going to keep letting them go to so-and-so house so I can go out and do my thing and they don't think about the people that's in the environment that they're taking their kids to because when I was younger my daddy never let his girl stay the night at a house if it was a man there right. if it was a father there a cousin a brother we could not stay at all and I never understood why like he didn't give me an explanation on it he would just be like no you can't be there I don't care if their father is a good man. You, you can't stay there. You can go over there and play for a little bit, but you have to come home. And then when that happened to me, I finally was like, now I see what daddy was talking about. Wow. Wow. And if you don't mind me asking, about what age were you when that happened to you? I was about 11 or 12. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So how how do you, how did it affect you? Were you able to talk to anybody about it? I didn't speak out about it until I was like 16, 17. And at 16, I was in girl school in Indianapolis. Wow. And when I was there, I was there for almost four years. I was there for a little bit over three years. And my mother never came and visited me. She didn't visit me. She didn't write me. She wouldn't call or nothing like that. So I wrote this letter. I wrote the letter like soon as I got there. But I never sent it out to her. I never showed anybody. I just kept it in an envelope. So I got this new counselor. This is me being there for about two and a half, three years. And for some reason, I just decided to show it to her. I was like, you know, I wrote this letter to my mom, and I never sent it out to her. I want to know what should I do. So when I showed her the letter, she read it, and she was like, we have to tell your mom and report the situation that happened. And I didn't understand why she had to report it. I was like, that happened when I was like 11. I'm 16 now. Like, yeah. I'm okay now. You know what I'm saying? She was like, no, we we have to report it. And the thing that hurt my feelings is she told my mom and my mom didn't even like care to reach out to me about it or to speak with me or ask me anything. She just went with an assumption and was like, oh, I know who touched her. And it bothered me because the person she said touched me, she was just doing it because she was mad at him. Wow. Like It, it wasn't no, oh, I see the signs or oh, he said something slick. It was just, oh, it had to be him. I, I know it was. But she never spoke to me about it. Even when I got out of girl school, she never had the conversation with me about it. And and that's and I'm I hate that happens to you because, you know, when something like that happens, the last thing that you need is uh, rejection. I think the first thing you need is support, and um, you know, not not denying that it happened. You know, I I don't know. I just I really want to know like what do you think would have been the best approach after going through something like that for someone? You know, like how how do we support someone who's been through this? Um, it depends on their strength and if they're willing to accept the support. Because a lot of people, they go through things and they feel like it's either their fault. Well, if I would have never went over there, it would have never happened. Or if I would have just wore some baggy clothes, they would have been looking at me like a lot of, like 80% women blame themselves first. And I was one of the women in that 80%. I blame myself because I felt like God was punishing me. I haven't gone to church since I was like in kindergarten. And at that time, I was already going through things in life. So I felt like God was just punishing me for some reason. And I didn't understand why. Because after my mom and dad split, my mom became, like, very abusive. Not just, no, whooping me because she was upset. Like, kicking me downstairs, slamming me in doors. Like, I can just name a whole list of things she was doing. So when that happened, on top of the abuse, I was just like, God is not liking me for some reason. And I'm just trying to figure out what can I do to become a better person so he can start blessing me. 
Wow. And, you know, I I can only imagine how that was for you. Uh, because, it, number one, it was not your fault that that happened to you. It definitely was not. And um, I, I want to thank you for even sharing this story with other people who may be going through this and are scared to speak out. You know, thank you for your courage and your bravery uh, for telling the story right now here today. Oh, no problem. No problem. I just hope that in anybody is feeling uncomfortable if they if something even did happen before they even had a chance to stop it like if you have somebody close to speak to like please speak on that because a lot of people keep that to themselves and it eats them up as they get older and it does not get better yeah said it, it happened to you about maybe 11 or 12 and you so you went like four or five years without even telling anyone right how did that affect you holding it into yourself um, I asked myself questions consistently. Like, I didn't get, like, sad or depressed about it because, like I said, I felt like God was punishing me for something that I didn't understand yet. So I just kept asking myself, like, why me? You know what I'm saying? What made him want to come on to me? What made him want to wait until I was in the picture to do so? And I even asked myself, like, hey, he done it to somebody else before because I considered him a friend. He was my mom's best friend's son. And my mom had him and his brother for the weekend. And I don't know if she thought anything of it, but apparently she didn't if she decided to go get them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we were always cool. Like, they always played with me and my brother. Like, we got along just fine. And then we all went to sleep, and I woke up, and he was in the process of, of dealing with me while I was asleep. And I did not know what to do, so I just close my eyes and let him finish and I just act like I was still you know I wasn't and it haunted me for a long time afterwards but like I said eventually I just got asking myself questions like was I the only person is that something that he normally did like why did he choose me why couldn't he just try to deal with me while I was awake like why wait till I go to sleep Mm -hmm. because you know what I'm saying do something like that to me so I asked myself a lot of questions for years but eventually it just gave me strength and like when I became a mother like it was like I overcame the situation like I forgave him I forgave myself and I was just like now I have to make sure I don't let nothing like that happen to my kids even though they're boys they happen to boys and girls right and and see I, I think that's one of the biggest things in our communities is that number one like you said a lot of times we don't say something because even after we do say something it's someone not believing you they're not supporting you and then right. nothing happens uh-huh. so what 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 are some goals that you feel like our community should have about uh approaching this issue um i feel like their approach should start off with the parenting if the parents pay attention to the surroundings and not being so busy about themselves, that, mm-hmm. that, that can be a good start off point. Because like I said, a lot of parents, they take their kids places or they take their kids over people's houses and they don't ask questions. They don't look around. They don't um, worry. They just think everything is okay. And, yeah. and it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. You absolutely so I, right. So I think if it starts off there, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that, that can like cut off half of the situations from happening. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, um, you know, coming up, my mother, she always, she always was very, very cautious about, um, us being with different people for that reason. So she would rather us be alone, like be to ourselves than to go to different right. people's houses for that reason. But, I always thought, like, if something was to happen to me, well, you know, would I tell her? Would I tell somebody? Because, you know, as a kid, you don't want to get anybody in trouble. You know, you don't. Right, you, yeah, most definitely. Because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, with kids being young, they just assume they're over-exaggerating or they're making something up. So they're just like, I'm not even going to gonna worry about it. But the simple fact that I went through it, it just puts a, a whole different outlook on life and when people come forward with those situations because like with my uncle, he's, he's no longer here. He passed away a couple of years ago, but he didn't speak of his situation until like a few months before he passed. Oh and he was goodness. 50. He was like 49. Wow. 
And and I think yeah, it's I, I think that's definitely an issue that's even harder for our men because they they keep so much to themselves, number one. And um, you know, you could you can very seldomly even get them to admit that that happened to them. And I think sometimes, you know what they say, sometimes abused people abuse people. And I think yeah. that if we can find a way to sit down and talk about this free of judgment, not judging people for coming, not judging people for coming forward. I think that's something that I would like to see happen in our communities, but I would definitely want to ask people who this has happened to, well, do they think the best approach is because I can sit up here and say everything all day long, but I really don't know how it is, you know? Right. Yeah. So yes. Um, Thank you very, very much um, for sharing this experience um, with people. And I hope that if someone is listening today and they've went through this, that they do get the courage to speak out and, you know, shame the person who has done this to them because we we have to find some type of way to get this to stop. It's a, it's a serious thing in our community. It's a serious yeah, thing. and a lot of people go through it. And like I said, the thing is people are scared to reach out to somebody because they're scared that they're going to get told that they're lying or they're making it up. Or a lot of people are embarrassed of it. Like I said with my uncle, I believe my uncle was embarrassed because he was a man. He thought to himself, this does not happen to men. You know what I'm saying? But he yeah. was a child, so he, he he was molested by his babysitter, which was my, my grandma's boyfriend at the time. So, like, he... For him to go through that as a child and then you wait until you're 49 to say something, like, I was just like, I, now I see why he was doing what he was doing. Because everybody handles it differently, whether it's alcohol, drugs, whether it's um, stealing or getting in trouble. They find different ways to cope with it so they can get it out their mind. And he was an alcoholic. That's what he passed from. So wow. I was just like, man, like, if he would have just spoke to somebody, he probably could have still been here. His health would have been good instead of him just turning to the bottle every morning. Yeah. And, and every day. Yeah. So I, so I think if there was a lot more supporters on the situation, maybe, I don't know, maybe people be able to speak up. But like I said, it all starts with the parents and making sure you protect your kids, making sure that you watch out who's around, ask questions, pay attention. But the sad part is, is that even people who work in daycare, they do the stuff too, whether it's abuse, molestation, like anything. So like, it's, it's really kind of scary. But I thank God, I'm a stay-at-home mother. So like I said, my oldest son, he goes to school, but little man, he stays home with me. So I'm like, at least, you know what I'm saying, he's not going to daycare, but it's just like, dang, now I got to make sure that the teachers aren't doing anything, but I like that I can go in the classroom anytime I want to, right. whether I have half look down with me or not. So that that helps me out a lot too to be involved with everything. But as long as the parents are just like I said, paying attention and being involved and making sure they watch their surroundings, then that, that's a, a fresh start at least for it to slow down. Yes, and I think you're right. You know, I I, I can only imagine. Because I don't have kids, so I, I know I'm going to have all type of anxiety when I finally do have kids just because of stuff like that. You know, there's right. so much stuff we got to worry about in our communities. And just for these kids, you know, they're so innocent. they so innocent, you know. I definitely want to make sure that they remain innocent because these babies are our future. We got to do what we can to protect them. So how do you think... Um, how, how how do you think that we can, as a community, like even if we don't have children, what do you think some things that we can do to prevent this from happening? Well, it's kind of hard because it's so many people who do it. Like, it's, like, it is, it's disgusting how people look at little kids or look at people in general and be like, yeah, that's what I'm going to take advantage of. What I'm going to take advantage of. Like, why do that? Like, why can't you find somebody your age to fulfill your desire or find somebody who's attracted to you? But like I said, some people, they're just attracted to the innocent. That's why so many sure. kids get touched because they know that they're going to be scared. They know that they're going to be scared to say no. They know that they're going to be scared to speak out to somebody. 
So they just let them do it because they're terrified. And I don't know why, but sometimes people like doing that. So I, I really don't know like what to say. In my predicament, I feel like if my mom would have been paranoid and worried like my father, then that probably wouldn't have happened to me. Right. Right. Now, the person that done that to you, have you seen him since then? I've never seen him since then. I couldn't even tell you what he looked like today. Wow. wow. Yeah, I, I don't know where he stays at. I don't know how he's doing. I don't know if he has kids, if he went to school. I don't know anything about him because that that was I was like 11 or 12. And then I was out for a year. Because as soon as I turned 14, I ended up going in the system. Yeah. Do you think um, that experience had a lot to do with you going into the system? No. Mm -mm. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Not, not at all. Me going in the system was a, a bad mother and daughter relationship. Okay. Now, do you think, well, you, because you never even told your mother you said at all. So, mm -mm. Until nope, you, I never told her. Right. Do you feel like you weren't comfortable enough to tell her? Um, it wasn't that I I was not um it wasn't that I was uncomfortable to tell her. I just knew nothing was gonna be done about it because like I said, she never talked to me about anything. Yeah. Like everybody knows when you're um what is it, fifth, sixth grade, we have those um those classes where the boys go in one room and the girls go in the other room mm -hmm. and they talk about sex and the menstruals and everything like that. Yeah. Well, at the time it was time for me to take that class and I was so excited because I really wanted to know about the menstrual and everything like that because I saw my mom going through it. So the parents have to sign the waiver in order for you to go. And I come back to my mom told me to go and she's like, you don't need that. I'm not signing you up for that. I'm not signing the waiver. And I'm like, mom, I really have to do it because they say women start their menstrual from ages 9, 10 on up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I was 10 at the time. And she was just like, no, I'm not doing it. Like, she was just mean about it. She's like, I don't understand why. But I forged the signature on the paper and I went and I kid you not, like four months later, I started my menstrual. Oh, wow. See, <laughs> look yeah. at that guy. And it, was, <laughs> and it was crazy because it was a girl that stayed in my neighborhood. And I don't know where her mother was at. Her mother wasn't in the picture. It was just her and her father. And her father was the one who told her about wrapping up her um, menstrual um, belongings and stuffing them down at the bottom of the basket, how to wipe yourself, how to shower a couple of times out the day when you're on it. He told her everything. She, wow. He taught me everything. And this girl was younger than me. I was in fifth grade, fifth, sixth grade, and she was in fourth grade. And she was telling me everything to do. And I hid it from my mama because my mama didn't want me to go to the class. Wow. So, like, she, she found out maybe, like, my second or third menstrual, though, because she saw um, a, a pad wrapper in, in the um, trash can in the bathroom, and she's like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, I was trying to get in the class, and you were just so mean about it, so how was I, you know what I'm saying, supposed to talk to you about it? But anytime I try to mention anything to her, whether it was going to family events or loving each other or trying to do family things together it was just a shutdown just a, yeah. a cold hearted wall up so i i knew when i had got touched that i couldn't go to her about it because she would just blew it off yeah that's crazy now since you've um opened up about it has it uh had a positive effect in your life Um, the positive effect that I've had from being open about my situation is me protecting my boys. Yeah. I'm very, very protective over them. I don't care if I can't go outside for three or four days. That's what I'm going to do because right. I need to make sure that they do not go through what I went through because my situation, I was stronger about it. Like, I didn't do drugs. I didn't turn into an alcoholic. I wasn't purposely getting in trouble or looking for attention. Like, I took in the situation, and I just dealt with it because I felt like that was supposed to happen to me. Even though I'm a child and no child supposed to tell themselves that, but I really thought that because, like I said, life was already bad for me anyway because of, the, because of how my mom was toward me. But me going through that is what makes me 
paranoid and so involved as a mother because I really feel like if I had not been touched, I wouldn't be so paranoid and worried about my babies as I do now. Like, I love them. I love them to death. You know what I'm saying? But as far as that situation, that's what helps me be worried about who watches them, who's around, who's in the house, who comes over. And that's why they're with me all the time. Like, the only people I let them go with is uh, my father, my AP, I have an AP that stays in Illinois, but she's single. She hasn't dated in like 18 years. So mm-hmm. I know nothing's going to happen with them, but she's protective over her child because her sisters and brother were molested and raped, which are my aunties and uncles. Wow. So like her and, I, her and I are in the same boat. So I know they're fine with her, but I have a handful of people that they go to. Wow. So that that's my way of, you know what I'm saying, taking the situation and turning it into a positive and by protecting them to make sure that they don't go through it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And the reason why I asked you that question is because, you know, sometimes people say they failed in something so long when they finally tell someone it felt like they were free just to be able to like tell someone that it happened and not keep holding it in to themselves all the time. Did you? Right, right, right. Because because when, when I gave my counselor the letter, she was sad. And I was, I, like, I was looking at her funny, like, why is she sad? Because then when she told me, she told my mom, but mom never, never reached out. Like I said, she didn't visit me. She didn't write me. She didn't try to set up a conference call with me or nothing. Even when I got out of girl school, she never once talked to me about it. Never did. So, like, I don't know if... She reacted like that because, A, she didn't care, B, she didn't know how to care, or C, she looked at it as, oh, it already happened, so it is what it is. Like, I don't know what her reasons are, but the same fact that my counselor had a way more reaction than she did just showed me that some people have heart on those situations and some people don't. Yeah. Yeah, you right about that. And I I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know how anyone could not have a heart for that situation. And I don't know if it's because I'm a woman. But I know as for me, like, my heart definitely goes out to anyone who's been through that. And I think y'all are the most strongest people in the world to have went through something like that and still have such a positive attitude. Because, girl, you are one of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> you are, you have such a bubbly, beautiful spirit. And so I just, I thank God for knowing you, girl. For real. Oh, thank you. I'm serious. I know you as well. Girl, I'm serious. You are so positive, you know. And I just think that you would be able to help a lot of people who went through this to not, um, to not beat themselves up about it. Because you're right, right, a lot of people beat themselves up, and it's not their fault. So, is, is there anything that you would like to say to the people listening who may have went through this? Um, if if you have went through it, please don't purposely harm yourself, whether it's with drugs, alcohol, um, purposely get into fights, anything to overcome it because that's not going to make it better. That's only going to make it worse because no matter how much you drink, no matter how many pills you pop, no matter how many fights you get into, you still going to think about it because none of that, you know what I'm saying, helped you overcome it. It just kept having to think about it, basically. It kept it on your mind. So whenever a negative happens in life, just try to turn it into a positive. Amen to that. That's the, the best way I can put it. Well, thank you so much for signing up for this. I appreciate you. I will no I will no be calling you throughout the week, just checking on you, you know, doing our little talks. It's been a pleasure. Most definitely. And anytime you want to come back to the Queen Quaymo podcast for any other topics, please feel free to do so, sister. Oh, no problem. No problem. If you need me to talk about anything else, I'm most definitely down for it. Most definitely. Yes, you guys, that was one of the homies that I know grew up with. Shout outs to her for uh, coming on to the show, giving her personal experience and uh, shed some light about uh, child abuse and um, 
child molestation. So, you know, this is something we definitely need to make sure that we address and we need to make sure that we protecting these babies. You feel me? That's what it all boils down to. And I'm going to go ahead and conclude this because as y'all can hear, I got nieces and nephews in the background. So I'm finna tend my duties as auntie and chill out. So make sure y'all tuning in tomorrow. It'll be another special episode. Uh, one of my homies, uh, transgender, talking about her experience transforming from man to woman. And another much needed conversation that we need to have within our community. So thank you for everyone who has listened. Make sure that um, if you have um, experienced any child abuse or experienced any child molestation, I just want you to know that you're not alone. There are people who are going through this just like you. And I encourage you to try to do what you feel is right about the situation. Report to the proper authorities. And so there is a hotline that you can call if you are a child or if you know of a child that has been going through uh, child abuse. And so we all are familiar with the DCS system. And a lot of people have different opinions about it. But they do have a different, uh, they do have a, a hotline geared directly towards that. And you could call that number. It's one 800 800 Five 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 six, and so if you are suspecting the child is being abused, neglected, or molested, you can call that. That is Indiana's child abuse line uh, and neglect today. It's available twenty four hours, seven days a week, three hundred and sixty five days a year. So do not be afraid, anyone. If you find out um, that someone is being abused, you go ahead and you make the report. Don't be afraid to make the report if you need to, because. Um, you could remain anonymous and also just make sure y'all educating yourselves and talking with these babies uh, about the do's and don'ts and that actually before ending this I think I'm going to include a clip that's what I'm going to do so y'all sit tight and listen to this clip and it should help y'all end y'all on a good spirit but I'm going to take a brief commercial break before doing that so yeah Hello everyone, welcome. I got a special guest in the building. She been wanting to get on the mic for a little while. Now I got my niece Naraya. Hey Naraya. Hey y'all. What's up? What you want to talk about today? Crabs. Crabs. What you want to say about crabs? Um, I'm gonna like read a book and I'm gonna tell you about crabs at the end. Okay, well. Go ahead and open your book and tell us about crabs. Crabs. I'm reading the title. Crabs. That's our crabs. Crabs are sea animals with hard shells. Okay. Some crabs are... <laughs> larger. Larger than a predator. That do not say predator. Girl, what do that say? Flower. Read the word, Naraya. Uh, uh, sun. Read it. <laughs> Girl, it says person. Person. The other crabs are has smell. They do not say smell. Yes, it do. No, it don't say smell. Take your time and read that book, girl. It might be too hard for me. It's not hard. If it's too hard, then I'm finna close the book. Shell. What it say? Shh. Sound it out and read that word. What it say? Read it. Well, that's enough crab knowledge for today. I'm going to help her read this book, and we'll be right back. I can't watch this anymore. It's crazy. How are we ever going to let Brianna be alone with anyone? To help protect kids from sexual abuse, talk with them about it in ways they'll understand. 
even if it's awkward. So. Okay. It's like this. Uh, it's about. We we have to talk about people who try to. If anyone ever tries to, you know,、um, touch your private parts. Totally messing this up. Why? It's just like talking to kids about safety rules. You need to talk about it a lot. Kevin, I love that head. Put a helmet on it. Mom. To help kids stay safe from sexual abuse, you need to talk about it a lot too. Tell kids always ask me first. Listen, we all know Coach Al, but you still have to ask me first before you get in his car. But it's Coach. Doesn't matter. You have to ask me first, okay? Got it. Tell kids. Tell me if anyone tries to touch your private parts. Kevin, before you go out. Okay, this is a little weird, but if anyone ever tries to touch your private parts, Mom, do we really have to talk about this? We really do, and you have to tell me if it ever happens. Okay? Weird, but I will. Tell kids no secrets. Sweetheart, nobody can touch your private parts. Okay? Remember, no secrets if anyone tries. Okay? Okay, Daddy. All right. Keep talking about sexual abuse, and keep asking questions. Have a good time. Yeah. What'd you do? Well, the more you ask, listen, and talk, the easier it gets. What I'm trying to say, honey, is that it's not okay for anyone to ever touch you there. Hey, your private parts. Okay. Okay, mommy. I can do this. To help keep kids safe from sexual abuse, tell kids always ask me first. Nobody can touch your private parts. No secrets. Tell kids. Tell me. All right. This concludes the episode of child abuse and child molestation. Thank y'all for tuning in. I know this was a rather serious topic, and、um, it was definitely a conversation that needs to be had. Make sure that you're looking up more information to try to、uh, approach these conversations with the kids. Make sure you're doing what you can to protect these babies from these type of environments. And if anyone has been experiencing any type of sexual abuse, Or any type of abuse at all, don't be afraid to speak up, because that's something that we definitely want to nip out of the bud. We don't deserve that in our communities. We need to remove that. So yes, make sure y'all tune in tomorrow. And I'm done. I'm done with this one. You know, y'all be ready for tomorrow. Though I'm out. <laughs>